Hey you folks, this is Matt once again, and this time I wanted to review a film that really enough came out in March of 2003. It's a film I reviewed on my account, my last account, but I haven't reviewed it here. And I wanted to watch it again, and I really enjoy this film. And I guess also Leonard Moulton, Gene Shalit, and Roger Ebert also reviewed They're one of the few critics who liked it, those three, because it got demolished by critics. It's a 5.9 on IMDb, which I think it should be much higher. Because fucking Battleship has a 5.9 on IMDb. I think this film's much better than Battleship. That's my personal opinion. It's a film directed by William Friedkin, and that's The Hunted. Yes, William Friedkin, who did The French Connection, who did The Exorcist. Guy's done a lot of movies. And this is one of my personal favorites of the guy. I really enjoy this film. I thought it was a very fast-paced thriller, action thriller, however you want to call it. And the film is not that long, which is a good way. I like long movies when it helps. Shawshank Redemption, Michael Mann's Heat. But sometimes films don't need to be overly long. And this film says 94 minutes, but without the end credits, this film is about 80 minutes. So an hour and 20 minutes goes at a very fast pace. I never got bored with the film. And unfortunately, this film flops. Critics, I think it's like a 30-some percent of Ron Tomatoes. I don't really understand why this film got crapped on. Unless people said, well, it rips off First Blood. Well, yes and no. But what I, I'm a bit Ramble fan, obviously, from my username. I have a Ramble cat, Ramble 3 back there. But I thought this was interesting because it's... Granted... I didn't listen to the commentary, but I never heard any mentions of First Blood as an inspiration. But the original novel, First Blood, just to get on there, I'm a big Rambo fan, and First Blood, the movie, is different from First Blood, the novel, that the movie's based on. Because in the novel, First Blood, Rambo is much more crazier. He's killing a lot more people. Like In the movie, First Blood, really, he kills one person. He throws the rock and hits the helicopter... Because that guy's trying to kill him, and he's doing it in self-defense. But he doesn't kill Brian Denny, he fucks his legs up. <laughs> Dip probably ain't going to be going like this forever. <laughs> he maims those cops in the woods, but he doesn't kill them. He only killed one person, is that dirtbait who was tried to kill him, and he had to do it in self-defense. And he even knows, you know, I don't want anyone hurt. He tries. But in the novel, Ramble killed a lot more people. And to the point where Trotman had to kill him. I know in the movie First Blood there was an ending where Trotman's ready to kill Rambo and he can't and Stallone, you know, Rambo gets the gun and shoots himself. I'm glad they didn't use that. Although they use it really enough in a flashback in Rambo 4. But in the First Blood novel, the guy, Rambo's far gone. Like, remember in, in the movie First Blood when there's this kid who's like a hunter and Rambo has a knife but doesn't kill him? I believe in the novel, Rambo actually kills the kid. So Rambo was really far gone, and that's kind of what Benicio Del Toro's character is in this film. He's a guy who has special skills, he's been in wars, I think the Kosovo War that I showed at the beginning. He's special forces, he knows how to assassinate very well. And now he's in Oregon, in the Pacific Northwest, and he sees these two hunters. One was actually played by Rex Lynn, who was one of the bad guys that worked for John Lithgow and Cliffhanger. He's bald, got a mustache. He's like, you fucking such an ape, Quaylen. That's Rex Lynn. He's been in CSI Miami, a bunch of other stuff. He's one of these two deer hunters, but Benicio Totoro thinks that those guys are trying to hunt him. And he fucks them up with his knife. And then we're introduced to Tom Lee Jones' character. And before I get more into the story... That's another reason why I enjoy this film. Not only because I thought it was very competent direction by William Friedkin. That was a very fast pace. Again, without the end credits, it's about 88 minutes long. I like the fact I kind of need to see what that First Blood novel would have been. It's kind of like this movie, which is interesting. I like that aspect, actually. I, I still think it becomes its own movie. I don't think it's 100% ripoff of First Blood. I mean... Like I said, it makes me think of First Blood, but it still does enough of its own thing, in my opinion. But it was cool to see, like, what if Tom Lee Jones is Troutman, and this guy's Rambo, and Troutman is your lead. But that was a really cool sort of way of looking at it. Plus, I think these two 
did an excellent job acting wise in this flick. And I thought the score was decent. It's actually by, I believe, Brian Tyler, who's done a lot of good stuff. Brian Tyler did the score, which I liked. And before I get into the story, another thing I wanted to mention. I really thought it was a nifty idea that William Freakin did this. At the beginning and ending of the movie, you actually hear Johnny Cash. do. Uh, you hear his voice saying a quote from the Bible about Abraham. Like, God said to Abraham, kill me a son. Abe says, man, you must be putting me on. God says, no. Abe says, what? God says, you can do what you want, Abe. But next time you see me coming... You better run. I, I, I like that. And then at the end, you hear that voice at the end. And then the end credits is a Johnny Cash song when the man comes around. I thought that was a nice little touch. I mean, Johnny Cash, may rest in peace, just has a great voice. And yeah, I thought it was a nifty little thing they did. But yeah, Tony Jones, I really enjoy his character. His character is a tracker. And these guys go to Tony Jones to help them out because Benicio Del Toro is actually one of the guys that Timely Jones trained. Because Timely Jones used to be a guy who trained these special forces guys. Granted, the Timely Jones himself never had to kill anyone, but he's an expert tracker. He learned from his father. So he knows how to do it. And I like the little training scenes that you see in the flashback. Really shows that's probably how they do it. Like, it takes a rubber knife and I'll, one, two, three, four, five, six. I really like that little bit of business. And you get, you see that Bedusa de Toro again was one of the guys who Timely Jones trained. And he goes in to the crime scene and says, you know, let me go in. And one of the FBI people is uh, played by an actress called Connie Nielsen. She's been in a few films. I, I don't mind. I liked her as an actress. And I like Tommy Jones goes, if I'm not back two days, it mean I'm dead. Like, he's very, like, off the cuff. Not off the cuff, that's not the right word. But he's very, just sort of throws it out there. And his character, I really like. Because his character is a man of few words. Like there's a scene where Tony, he's in the city, he's waiting for Connie Nielsen, not really her office, but he's kind of like pacing back and forth and his hands are like doing this. Like he's not really comfortable unless he's back home. And when people are talking to him, he says very like, yes, no, very like short answers, like man, a few words in a way, but he's very direct. Which I liked. I like the opening where it shows that he's in British Columbia and he rescues this white wolf who's in the snare trap and he actually finds the guy who did it takes the snare trap and slams him right into the table it says no more snare traps i, I like that it made me it's all right tom lee I i'm a fan of tom lee jones as an actor i really enjoy his enjoy him as an actor i thought he did a really great job and i thought benicio del toro did, did good as the guy who he thinks people are after him and in a way he's right but not to the extent that he thinks because it's a little bit of psycho. But Tyler Jones finds him. And I like the way they do the fights, the little knife fight sequences. It's about two of them between Tyler Lee Jones and Benicio Del Toro, but I like it. It's more like blocking, grappling, very quick, swift. Uh, more like sort of really pounding blows to knock the knife out. I like the way it's done. I, I liked it. It's not that something I see typically, which I really is refreshing in a way. That was really well done. And this film gets a little bit bloody, which I like too. And don't expect this film to see big, humongous action scenes or explosions, because you're not going to get it. I thought it was just a very nice, tight, straightforward thriller. And I thought it worked well with very good direction by William Friedkin. And when... It, Benicio Del Toro gets caught. These guys who Benicio Del Toro worked for grabs him. You realize that they want to kill him because he was sent on a job and he fucked up and he killed innocent people. But Tommy, but Tommy, Benicio Del Toro fucks them up and Tommy Lee Jones has to go chase him again. Uh, but I like the little bits of business. For instance, there's a sequence where Tommy Lee Jones is chasing Benicio Del Toro and Benicio Del Toro is in a car and he's trapped in traffic. And he just takes the car and starts bashing back and forth all the cars so he can get through. I like that bit of business. Oh, I like the scene where it's the cab mouse sequence where Tommy Lee Jones is looking for Benicio Del Toro in the city and using his tracking skills. So he's noticing footprints, uh, trying to notice. And 
Pinedo Sotaro's trying to get away from, so he goes in here, goes in there, and Tommy Lee Jones trying to find them. There's like this little, little tiny waterfall, and Pinedo so is Tommy Lee Jones sees a little glimpse of Pinedo Sotaro and gets in there, but then when he gets in, doesn't find him, but then sees some wet footprints and tries to chase him again, and chases him. Tommy Lee Jones jumps onto this train and chases in the train. I like that little bit of business. Again, it's not humongous action pats epic blockbuster type of action sequence but I thought it was well done that was well done you know, don't go expecting you don't see like the car chase from the French connection or to live and die in LA don't go expecting that or don't see this expecting that but I thought it was effective I thought it was well done I thought it was tightly paced I like Benito Del Toro shows he's very efficient Kills this one FBI guy, just gets him and jams a knife right into his shoulder, throws it, gets a guy right in the neck. I love the ending sequence where Tommy Jones has to chase Benito Del Toro. Kind of like this little island that's off from the city. This little sort of island forest. And Tommy Jones has to make like a, a I guess rock. I forget what type of rock. But has a chip away, make this little tiny knife. It's the best he can do. And Benito Del Toro makes his steel knife. Well, metal knife. I like this sort of bat cat and mouse. Granted, this could be, this is unrealistic. Because Tom Lee Jones finds something and he picks it. And Benito Del Toro had enough time to make this trap. Where a big fucking thing, big fucking thing, trees here go and try to smash him. But... I think one of the deleted scenes I saw it might have been the alternate. It really was just like some little rock trying to fall on Tom Lee Jones. I don't know if that was also supposed to be in there or that was this was filmed in place of that scene. So I was able to go a little leap of faith, like take okay, they took a little bit of liberty with that, and I like the little sequence, so I forgive her for that, that's fine. Thought the one they have in the movie is a better scene. I love the fight scene that they had, like, on top of these waterfall. Well, not really on top of the waterfall, because Tommy Jones gets trapped in this... Well, he gets laid snapped... Not snapped. Snapped in this trap, and Tommy Jones has to cut in at the bottom of this waterfall. They have this really cool fight, and they both get cut up badly. Tommy Jones gets cut here, like, two or so cuts in his chest. And actually, Blaine Sotoro gets a fucking knife right there, and he has to get... I don't want to give everything away, but I really like the the knife fighting. It gets pretty bloody. And I like the the last shot where Tommy Lee Jones sees that white wolf again, and you can put your own metaphor into it. But Grant, I only have 15 minute limit, so I can't go you know 50 minutes or whatever into this film, The Hunted. But what I really enjoy this film, I thought it was very fast paced, 88 minutes. I mean, it's 94 minutes, but without the end credits, 88 minutes. I like the nice touch at the beginning and ending with Johnny Cash. I'm a big fan of Tom Lee Jones. I really enjoy his performance as his tracker, who's never had the kill, but he may have to. Uh, Benicio Del Toro, I thought, played, played a decent cycle. Granted, one or two moments of his acting, like there's a scene where he's with this little girl who he knows, and he's teaching her how to track. His performance in that, for some reason, felt a little off to me. I don't know his delivery or what, like teaching this girl about what these tracks are. There's like a handful of scenes, um, he sounded kind of off, but the rest of it, I thought it was pretty good. I thought he did a pretty decent job. Uh, again, I really like Timely Jones. I like the effective pace. I like the little knife fight sequences that you see, the two knife fight sequences. Uh, it just went at a fast pace. I like that they didn't do the typical, oh, Tom Lee Jones, you know, you have this FBI girl, Connie Nielsen. They didn't do the typical, oh, they fall in love or something like that. They don't go in that direction, which wasn't needed. Um, I like, another thing that made me think of First Blood is, remember the scene in First Blood where Trotman goes, you know, I'm coming to get my boy. And then he goes, if you're saying that much, send a big supply of body bags. And then here you have Tom Lee Jones saying, you decided what's susceptible body count. Normal bars, that's what you do if you declare war on my boy. I'm like, this is fucking Troutman. Uh, Tommy Jones is Troutman. And I, some people may be pissed. I thought that was kind of cool, actually. 
You know, I have to remake First Blood. They did it. But I thought this was a really solid flick. I thought William Freakin, Tom Lee Jones did a really good job. Denise Del Toro did a decent job. I like the location in Oregon, the Pacific Northwest. I don't know if they actually shot there, but it looked good location-wise. Overall, I thought it was a very straightforward, fast-paced, underrated thriller. That's just my opinion. By the way, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you later.